So Brazil. Brazil has a major trash problem. the air conditioning a little bit so this is like the uh, the place where I live yeah this is my house right here so it's a lovely place well taken care of nice pool you know the neighbors are all right my house just needs a little bit of paint again it just you know every rainy season it just turns black like this I'm gonna show you what I mean by this, uh, <laughs> you know, this pollution, this trash problem, as soon as we come out of the gate here. So it's all just a really nice, nice gated community here where I live. So, so if I can get out, can I make this turn here? Yeah. So. As we come out here, this is the reality, and it's just a crying shame. Seriously, this is just. It's always been like this. I mean. As soon as you, you know, you kind of almost live like in a little bubble, you know? It's like, this is my piece of paradise. This is like, everything's perfect. And as soon as you come out the door, you kind of get reminded that uh, you are living in a developing country. And, and this is just, it's, you know, it's everywhere. It's everywhere, it's everywhere. So it's, uh, uh, I don't know, I, I don't know how to explain it, I don't have words, it's just, uh, it's just sad, really, it just goes on and on and on. That's how it is. That's no getting away from. And unfortunately, a lot of these developing countries, as you, know, you see around in Asia, and even here in South America, there's a lot of trash, there's a lot of plastic, there's just, there's so much of it. And like for me personally, I wouldn't call myself like an environmental activist. You know, I'm not, I'm not into that extreme, you know, group of people who, you know, spend a lot of effort on talking about or you know thinking about protecting the environment. I mean, and now I'm going to be talking about my personal, you know, what I, my personal opinion on the world. And if you look at, you know, carbon emissions and all of that, you know, and the, the temperature rising and I'm a, I'm a huge skeptic, you know, I'm kind of like, I'm really in the middle, like, I don't know who to believe, you know, is the world actually getting hotter? And if it's getting hotter, is this actually impacted by us humans, you know, is, is this our fault? Or is it just like a cycle, you know, that the world is going through, that everything will return to normal? But anyways, that's not actually part of this topic, you know, this video, because in my humble opinion, our biggest threat 
today. It's not if the world, you know, it's not, it's not right now if the oceans will rise or when they will rise or, you know, if we will have hurricanes and or a new ice age or whatever. Our biggest threat, immediate threat, as of right now, is the pollution, our rivers, our oceans, you know, everything. It just, like, the plastic, the amount of plastic that is present, you know, in our oceans, in our rivers, it's terrifying. It's because it's incredible the amount, the, the thousands of millions of tons of plastic, you know, that is just in our oceans. It's just insane. And especially here where I live in Brazil, uh, it's been 15 years now since I lived here in this country. And in my 15 years, I think I kind of get like, um, you kind of get blind. You kind of don't see it anymore you know it's become part of whatever you know it's just it's just part you know there's just trash everywhere and you kind of get used to it and uh, just like I said you I go back to my to my house you know in my gated community in my little bubble you know it's all the grass is freshly cut there's no trash it's all clean it's all you know it's it's like another world but even like today as soon as I come out of my house as soon as I leave the gate you know there's trash everywhere but it's been like that for me every single day for my 15 years that I've been living here in Brazil the trash is there it's kind of like you don't see it anymore you know it's uh, you kind of need to open your eyes again in the long run if this continues if we don't do something about this there's going to be so much plastic that you know we're actually going to run run out of food you know there's not going to be any fish there's not going to be any any life left in our oceans and the life that's going to be left is going to be so toxic that we can't even eat it you know so that's my whole point about me you know i'm not saying that we shouldn't focus on you know the environment the atmosphere you know uh, carbon emissions and all that sort of stuff you know with the windmill farms solar farms and everything sure you know sustainable energy is the way to go but but what i'm talking about i think if we don't grasp this pollution this plastic problem as of right now as of right now that is going to be the least of our worries i think with atmosphere with everything because we're gonna have mass hunger we're gonna it's just gonna destroy you know everything the whole ecosystem in the oceans I mean that's my opinion anyways I think you know there is so much focus on on pollution and what's going on in the atmosphere but I think the real problem is plastic and garbage and every, all this crap that we're put you know just chucking in the rivers and we forget about it and like I said I think the problem is also is like for us for all of us who live you know in this there's always been trash here and you kind of you, you kind of you know you don't notice it anymore it's just there it's it's part of the world we live in and that's the dangerous part how do we solve this problem how do we grasp it you know and they say moment here they say you know that every single one of you can make a difference look I pick up my garbage I put it in the garbage bin you know that's what I do every single day I don't throw it on the streets you know I put it in a plastic bag I chuck it you know where it's supposed to go one person cannot make a difference it's the problem lies by the government by the leaders of the world we need prohibition we need to stop allowing people to produce plastic goods for everything what really infuriates me is when I go to these supermarkets here in Brazil you buy like you can buy two pieces of you know freshly cut fruit like two pieces of lemon slice yeah now these two pieces of lemon slice they come 
in a, like a styrofoam uh, plate and it's all you know packed inside this plastic wrapping a watermelon is what it is it's basically only water you know there's a little bit of meat in it if you took off all the water away you know and just left with the actual product per se you know you would have more more packaging more plastic more styrofoam more garbage than you would have actually you know fruit it's it infuriates me there's no need for it you know there's no need to produce all of this plastic another thing you go to the supermarkets here and I've seen this in the US as well I don't really get it if you go to Norway yeah, in my country you go to supermarket there at least there you can get like one big plastic bag um, you have to pay for it there is a price but this plastic bag is actually it's quite strong yeah it's quite big but what they do here they have like these small plastic bags like this size you know or a little bit bigger and it's like the thinnest material the problem is 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 when you do grocery shopping you know instead of needing one maybe maximum two bags you go home with like these 50 of these small bags you know you put like one product in each bag you know it's just barely enough to get a six pack inside this uh this side this bag and if you do buy a six pack or like like the long necks you know the glass bottles um they will put maybe two or three of these plastic bags inside each other you know so you so they won't break you know so you won't uh, have the possibility of them breaking so for a normal day for me going grocery shopping i come home with um, you know maybe like i'm guessing 20 or 25 of these plastic bags which i try again to use for you know garbage or picking up my <laughs> my dog shit there is a technology to to produce these uh, biodegradable bags you know that you can actually if you wanted to you could chuck them out you shouldn't do that anyways because it doesn't look nice but anyways if it does end up in in the streets you know it's uh, I think it's like within a week it all dissolves and it's gone um, but even that shouldn't be necessary you know what they should do is just ban all plastic bags altogether, you know, and just go with like, if you want to go shopping, you forgot your, your bag, you know, too bad for you. Or at least they can sell, you know, some bags. If you forgot them, then they, at least you have an option to buy, you know, a proper, you know, bag that you can use again and again and again, you know. But I know this discussion has been going on for years and, and, you know, this is, of course, these ideas have long been been talked about, but nobody's doing anything about it. Why not? Why is it so difficult? Like, it's like everybody's saying, well, you, it's only you who can make a difference. No, it's not. It's the government. It's the, it's the leaders of the world. You need to put down laws. You need, there needs to be consequences, you know? It's like, um, if a store sells some plastic bags, okay, find them because it shouldn't be allowed, you know, it's that sort of stuff. They tried here now in Brazil also to, like now it's a lot common to have these like paper straws, which is another thing. I don't like them because they kind of dissolve, you know, you use them, you're like halfway into your milkshake or your, uh, or your coconut, you know, and it starts dissolving, you know, you get all of these like, paper bits in your mouth and it's not really pleasant um, but of course these are all paper but then again okay paper we come to another discussion we have the Amazon we have the trees everything you know look we need to find a solution to this and the government you know needs to really get their act together and come up with a solution because all of this trash everywhere it's just multiplying you know multiplying multiplying every single year and forget about climate change and all that crap because we're gonna be we're gonna have oceans without life lifeless ocean or you know toxic fish within a, a very short period of time if this continues and uh, at least that's my personal opinion 
I, if you have a different opinion, put it in the comments below, but at least that's, that's my take on it. So, what happens to the trash here in Brazil? This is also, it's a little bit different because there are, I know there are down south, you know, in uh, the really big cities like Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo, I know they have like uh, these huge landfills and they put like mass on top of it. And I think it creates uh, methane gas, if I'm not mistaken. It's like methane ga gas and they, they extract that afterwards and use it, you know, sell them to, I don't know, to, to households for cooking or something like that. But up here, where I am located, up here in the northeast of Brazil, from it leaves your household, what usually happens is once a week, you know, the municipal will come and, and collect it and uh, it will go to a landfill. Now, these landfills, they will be quite some f distance away from the city and preferably downwind from the city. And the reason I'm saying why they're downwind from the city is because they light a match and they set the whole thing on fire. So you got tons and tons of plastic just going up into the atmosphere. So, you know, talking about climate change, talking about the atmosphere, you know, if we, <laughs> if we tackle the, the problem with plastic and trash and everything, you know, at least that will help a little bit again with the with the with the atmosphere, with the pollution of all the crap that we're putting up into into our atmosphere, yeah. So that's basically what happens. And I've been driving, you know, I drive along and suddenly you just see a big plume of smoke and you know it's a landfill for some town or some city and they, it's, you know, that time of the week where they just let it on fire. Um, there is really no recycling here. Um, it's kind of a big joke. Uh, I've seen in some of these towns and cities, they try to do some recycling. They put on different, trash cans with different color codes you know with different types of waste but you look inside of these it's all mixed up people don't care here and that's another problem that's another thing I want to get, get into and that is the attitude of the average Brazilian about pollution about trash about climate change about everything it's the attitude to actually change the 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 attitude on, on on the environment you know just to to able to to get a brazilian to open its eyes and see jesus christ what are we doing here you know it's that is probably the most difficult difficult thing that that we can do and it's a problem we really should try and solve but it's it's really 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 difficult to change the mentality the way of thinking of the um, the locals here here in Brazil so I'm gonna try and explain why it's so difficult we'll have well, you have like a family they'll get out you know in the weekends uh, there will be the uh, the child the, the parents their grand you know the grandparents the entire family you know they get together that's what Brazilians like, love to do here you know just spend their weekends their days on the beach watching these families you often see them, they'll buy like a popsicle or, you know, open a candy bar or, you know, a bag of chips or whatever. What will happen is these will just drop right on the, on the sand, on the beach. Seriously. They kind of like do that a little bit discreetly, you know, they'll be like, oh, oops, I lost my bag. Oops, you know, it kind of fell out of my hand. They'll do it like that because I think in the back of the minds, they're like, oh, they're a little bit embarrassed. I don't want to see it, but they actually do. And then there's a problem solved. And where I live, the wind is so strong. As soon as that bag hits the ground, it goes off flying. And then it's, it's already gone, you know, within two or three minutes. That bag, that plastic, that garbage, it's out of sight. It's gone somewhere else. Problem solved. You know, nobody can come up afterwards and say, hey, pick up your trash because it's gone. You know, I have what trash? There's nothing here, you know? So, and the grandparents, they will do this. The parents will do this and they'll do everything. And while the, the children, they'll be watching, they'll be watching this behavior. This is their way of, this is their normal. This is uh, their way of, uh, this is totally acceptable for this child. 
they're watching, you know, their closest, the ones who are supposed to be mentoring them, te teaching them, you know, to take care of their planet, which is going to be their future for the next 90, maybe 100 years, you know? So how do you change the mentality of someone who doesn't, who has just knows no better, you know? How do you teach a kid? How do you cheat, teach, you know, anybody? Like, this is wrong when this is all you know. You know, there's trash everywhere. If you look, if you come out on the streets, you know, there's just rubbish everywhere. So how do you, how do you teach your, your kid that, you know, this is wrong? You, you basically can't, you know, there's just no way you can do it in school and everything else, but people just continue to do it, you know? It's like with corruption here in Brazil. Of course, how, how can you end corruption when you have so much corruption on the very, very top? You know, you have the leaders of the country, you have all the politicians. Like they are corrupt to the bone. Like 80% of them. Corruption is culture here in Brazil. So how can you end corruption if the whole entire population is looking at the news of ah oh, this politician he was corrupt he stole the, you know so so much money and then they go to jail for maybe a couple of months or maybe a few days or maybe a year who knows you know but eventually money is king you know money that they stole from the government they can use then again to buy themselves out you know or they'll have like a I'll be on like probation or something like that in a luxury villa somewhere. It's ridiculous and there's nothing anybody can do about it. So how can we change the mentality? Well, we can't. And this is my whole point. The politicians, the leaders of our world, it's the only way, it's the only way. Because if if we go back to the story with this kid sitting on the beach, watching his parents, his grandparents, you know, just throw away trash on the street or on the beach, you know, anywhere. The kid is gonna say, this is, this is totally fine. There is nothing wrong with this because my parents, the ones that I, that you look up to, the ones that, you know, at that point in your life, the ones that control your life, the ones who are, the leaders in the family, if you want to call it that, yeah? It's exactly the same thing with us who live like in a country with our leaders, with our politicians, with the ones that that we were voted on, you know, to make a difference, to, to show how, you know, how can we make this country better together? Well, if they're all going around stealing, being corrupt, you know, and just, being thinking about themselves well okay then it's gonna be every man for himself and that, that's the mentality and I can't really blame like that's a problem because I can't really if I see this family I can't really go up to them and say well pick up a trash or if I really see that they just keep you know I've said it a couple of times but they shrug their shoulders and they kind of they don't even get embarrassed anymore, you know? They kind of, they don't understand what is the big deal. They don't get it. They just don't get it. And that's why it's like, I really want to cry when I see it, but then again, I just stop. You know, I just, it's what it is. And it's a crying shame because it's just more and more and more and more. I'm gonna say also, there is there is at least a positive aspect of the situation where currently, at least where I'm living. And that is that we have like these trade winds. And these trade winds, they are slightly onshore all year round. So we never have any offshore winds here. Like it never happens. The wind is always on shore and thank God for that because 
all of this trash that you know is pollutes our rivers and you know ends up on the street and just everywhere the wind is basically just going to take this further inland and for me personally i prefer that it goes further inland than it ends up in the oceans because the oceans is already chock full of trash we don't need to put any more trash there and um, despite all the trash you know i'm a kite surfer um, i love to surf and uh, i love the ocean i love being on the beach and for you know for the whole purpose of tourism you know getting tourists you know if you had a beach just full of plastic you know people wouldn't come people wouldn't people would be outraged you know so so they clean their beaches at least you know and all these trash that they clean up i bet they just chuck them somewhere and it gets taken by the wind or to a landfill i don't know but anyways they clean the beaches the beaches are clean when you do enter the ocean you know if you go surfing or whatever you want to do at least the the oceans are the waters around this place where i live they're they're quite clean you know they're quite free of plastic thank god and <laughs> we got a lot of we got a lot of turtles here it's quite funny every time i um, every time i go kite surfing i always every single time is guaranteed to see a turtle and it's 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 quite funny because all of the tourists who come here they're like oh i've spent three weeks here and never seen a turtle you know i've gone swimming or whatever but they usually stay, you know, beyond the reef. You know, it's kind of like uh, where I do the kite surfing. It's um, protected by like a reef, and the, the turtles they rarely come inside this reef. You kind of need to surf out quite far. But as soon as you, as soon as you pass this reef, you know, these turtles they're humongous. They're like huge. The first time I saw it, I thought it was a person swimming out there. You know, you got a lot of small ones as well, but. Uh, I, I'm guessing like once or twice a week you see these massive turtles and I love I love to see that you know I'm a big I love everything that has to do with uh, wildlife and, and um, especially the preservations of our of our oceans is extremely important to me I think this is uh, the place that we really should focus on and I think also uh, it's a good thing, you know, because we don't have a lot of plastic in the oceans just because there's that onshore wind constantly that prevents any plastics to be to be blown into the oceans. Yeah. So at least the areas around here, they are quite healthy and we have a lot of wildlife. There's a lot of uh, turtles, you know, we have a lot of there's a lot of lobster and fish and uh, you know you at least you know you get good quality seafood here in uh, where I live at least and uh, and uh, it's good to know it makes you sleep sleep good at night at least knowing that the oceans around this place are at least safe for the mo for the time being okay so that's it um, I can't think of anything else to say I think you get my point yeah and leave a comment if you uh, if you agree or if you disagree or you know whatever but like uh, just to summarize you know I think uh, we should be absolutely focusing you know a lot more on the oceans and uh, the plastics and all of this garbage that we're producing every single day this is this should be our focus and we should uh, you know try and try and solve that it's it's complex you know we have other problems in the world as well you know it's there's a reason I don't have kids and this is I'm not going against any of you who have kids a lot of my friends have kids I like kids I love kids uh, you know but it has nothing to do with that this is just for me personally I I don't have children just because I'm afraid of the future what 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 future are we gonna leave for our children you know and it's not only about trash it's not only about pollution it's about the instability also of the world you know there's just so much going on I try and stay positive I try and you know live today and see what I have 
accomplished and what, what I have in my life and, and every day and, and just be grateful that, you know, the sun is shining, the wind is blowing, I'm living in paradise, um, you know, and uh, I'm grateful for that. But like I said, I'm, I'm also, for me personally, I'm happy I don't, I don't have kids because uh, I think the future is so uncertain that that would be just another anxiety, you know, an anxiety for me, you know, to, you know, what, what future will, will they actually have? But, you know, hopefully we'll sort something out and uh, the world will eventually, you know, be a better place to, to live. I hope so. But anyways, that was my take. I'm just going on and on and on. I'm just going on rambling about here uh, thanks again for joining in I really do appreciate it and uh, like I like I said I'm gonna be trying to post more and more you know trying to uh, give you an insight about how it is to be a foreigner here in Brazil and there's like a hundred thousand topics that I could cover I just need to prioritize and pick one at the time uh, like I also mentioned previously in my previous video I do have some personal stuff going on in my life that's not really easy. You can take a guess, whatever it is. I will tell you one day. Uh, currently, I don't want to go into details, but uh, yeah, one day I'll probably tell you all you guys what's what's happening. But anyways, it's, uh, it's not that easy, right, as of now. But life goes on. Just uh, stay positive and uh, hopefully, I'll, uh, hopefully you will su subscribe to my channel and uh, maybe smash the like button on this video if you did enjoy it and also leave a comment on, on what you think about this uh, the situation or the world that we live in what do you think is the solution is there a solution yeah so that's it take care guys thanks for uh, tuning in and uh, until next time you know stay safe guys keep your distance from each other and uh, ciao ciao